Treating Babesia, my go-to clinical tips, I'm Dr. Daniel Cameron. This is a part of a Common Sense Lyme series. So let's begin. Now, Babesia treatment is often overlooked. It's a malaria-like illness. It's not a traditional bacteria that might be treated with doxycycline. It's often missed in patients uh, with early Lyme disease. They don't realize that the same tick that causes Lyme disease carries this parasite called Babesia, and doxycycline alone is not effective. When tests are ordered for Babesia, they often order a blood smear. That's where you see Babesia in the red blood cells, but that's only for about a week, and I have patients who never go through that uh, time where they have a positive uh, blood smear. Often I'm reliant on PCR or antibodies. PCR actually uh, misses at low level infections, often isn't positive. Now, sometimes the antibodies are positive. These IgG and IgM are positive, but uh, that's not a sure thing. And once you get a positive test, that doesn't mean the infection is still there. When suspicion is high, I treat. If they have night sweats, half of the Lyme patients with Babesia have sweats. Uh, sometimes they have something called air hunger. But in other cases, their symptoms are very similar to what you might see in Lyme, like fatigue, POTS-like symptoms, temperature dysregulation, anxiety, depression. These are often dysautonomic issues that I see in uh, Babesia patients. The first line treatment, I use a tovacone as azithromycin. A tovacone targets the parasites. The feeling is that based on the first study and only study of its kind by Dr. Krauss and colleagues is that azithromycin supports anti-parasitic effects. This combination has been established. But in my practice, if they can't take Zithromax or there's another uh, possible infections, I sometimes use something like doxycycline and a tovacone as part of the treatment protocol. Now, why I prefer Malaron is this is a tovacone with proguanol in a pill form. It's 250 milligrams of a tovacone. Now, Mepron, which is part of the original study, was 750 milligrams. It's a liquid format. The other thing I like about Malaron is that there's a pediatric uh, tablet uh, formulation, which instead of 250 is 62.5. And if somebody's really sensitive, if they have dysonogamic issues, uh, I sometimes find they can tolerate this dose better, plus it's a pill, and it's easier to administer. I don't use clindamycin and quinine in my practice. The reason is, is that it's associated with nausea, tinnitus, poor tolerance. Uh, even in the literature, it's very hard to tolerate the, this medicine. Half the people got sick on the original studies. That's why tovacone and azithromycin came along, which gave the same efficacy without the side effects. I find it's too harsh to include it in my practice. One of the newer options that's been introduced is Tefloquin, and the brand name is Crintafel. It was originally used for a malaria. It may help resistance or relapsing Babesia, but there's not much uh, published. There's one paper where it was used for a patient, but the patient uh, was finally treated with a tovacone after all but it's been used off-label for, for some Lyme disease protocols until there's more research on this drug. I still use a tovacone for my go-to medication. Now, order tests uh, when I'm treating for Babesia. I find liver tests, hemoglobin hematocrit, uh, commonly used. Uh, I don't typically see hemolysis in people I treat for Babesia later. Hemolysis seems to be the beginning of that the disease uh, when there's parasites in red blood cells. Uh, I have to monitor for Herxheimer reaction, which is a flare up when you start treatment. And I have to watch for drug tolerance and adherence because some patients do uh, not get uh, better, better with the uh, tovacone. Now, the signs that treatment for Babesia is working is if their energy returns, night sweats clear up. If they're air hungry, if they have the uh, night sweats, air hunger, if they start improving, the recovery might start out uh, well during the first month where there's some windows, some gains, but I often find that I have to go longer than one would think. 10 days of treatment for Babesia was proposed in the 1990s by Dr. Krause and colleagues, but that was for acute 
Babesia, where you could see the parasites in the red blood cells. I don't have that luxury. Patients have been sick a while, and I often have to start with 30 days of a tobaclone, and uh, uh, we reevaluate at the end of the month to see their response, and I'll continue if I need to. My final thoughts on Babesia is even if the labs are negative by smear, antibodies, or PCR, I treat clinically. If uh, I have a uh, patient who has fatigue and night sweats, that might help make the diagnosis. If they have those symptoms and they clear, that helps support uh, the patient and helps support the diagnosis. Uh, but oftentimes, people with patients have a lot of autonomic uh, dysfunction, including POTS, uh, and so I've monitored those during treatment. There are a number of references that are available. It's been discussed at great length at conferences. So thank you for joining me for this Common Sense Lyme series discussion on Babesia treatment and tips I use in my practice. Have a good day.